Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Energy News Beat Podcast. My name's Stu Turley, President CEO of the Sandstone Group. And I mean, this is already starting out to be just a totally crazy week. Let me give you the stories in the rundown today's show. Virginia legislation would activate state program to fund electric school buses. It's kind of interesting. Let's go around to our second favorite state. New York State proposes Rapid Act and other bill to aid in transition uh, to renewable energy and away from natural gas. You can't buy this kind of entertainment. Iraq remains committed to OPEC plus deal to cap oil output at 4 million barrels per day. This is just interesting. Uh, Fervo energy drilling results show rapid advancement in geothermal performance. Pretty cool. Got to love our good uh, EMP operators learning how to do some new geothermal stuff. Let's go over to JAPX. Uh, sees U.S. as enticing destination for energy exploration. Got to like this little article from Tokyo. So with that, as we get started, uh, Virginia legislation would activate state program to fund electric school buses. I find this pretty funny uh, since there are so many problems with buses having problems not working and uh, really costing about 16 times more than everybody ever says. The amendment calls for moving the money half in 2025 and half in 2026 from the general fund to the Department of Environmental Quality. DEQ staffers would use the 200,000 uh, nowhere near enough to even buy one e-bus to set up a working group tasked with establishing sources of long-term state funding for the transition. This is so many, so like so many other projects we've seen that it's just about moving money from one pot to the other pot to talk about it. Kind of like the five windmill, um, uh, just the five windmills up in the Great Lakes that were never done for fifty million dollars, and they and they were actually only able to give back the, I believe, the thirty-two million. The rest of it was just filled, uh, spent on um, um, permitting. So. Again, Virginia uh, school districts have been plugged into federal dollars, private, uh, public private ventures and utility programs, even bought buses directly. 67 buses are on the road uh, or in order in Virginia, thanks to grants from the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. Uh, they, they did $5 billion for school bus electrification. Uh, here's, here's a quote that really stood out when the federal money goes away, we have to figure out a way to pick it up at the state level so we can transition all the buses. Should anybody tell them how expensive it really is? I just, I love the idea of electric buses, but that much weight, the buses are already heavy, make them electric. And I mean, they're going to just flow just really have some serious second order of magnitude of effects. So let's roll over here to our second favorite state for entertainment, New York state. New York state proposes a rapid act and other bill to aid in transition from renewable energy and away from natural gas. Uh, Governor uh, Kathy Hochul is entertainment at its finest uh, the executive budget proposal, the transportation, economic development, and environmental conservation budget includes two pivotal uh, energy proposals. The renewable action uh, through project interconnection and the Deployment Act and the Affordable Gas Transi Transition Act. <laughs> um the AGTA, the Affordable Gas Transition Act, is uh, looking to ban natural gas and go to all renewables. 
specifically the ATG uh, AGTA would include the achievement of the state's CLCPA goal within the state's gas, electric, and uh, steam service policy to eliminate the 100-foot rule, ending the practice of having utilities fund new gas hookups out of its rate base rather than charging the individual customer and revisit the obligation to serve customers who seek new gas hookups hookups this is just amazing that they are stepping in to eliminating the lowest cost uh energy with the lowest impact on the environment and removing this from a choice from consumers they could be saving so much money and having a better impact on the environment. Governor Hochul, if you and or anyone out of uh, your government or your administration would like to come on the podcast, I would love to visit with you and any of your representatives and you and your get the details of what you're thinking about this as I'm not sure that the thought process of actual CO2 output, how much it's going to save versus how much it's going to cost the tank taxpayers and that this is going to bankrupt New York. I love New York state, but it just seems like uh, bad management is going on here. I'd love to have you on the podcast and uh, visit with you. Let's uh, rumble over to Iraq. Iraq remains committed to OPEC plus deal uh, to cap oil output at 4 million barrels per day. Here's where uh, I think it's kind of funny. Under Trump and the sanctions that were Im uh, imposed and followed up on, they were at 400,000 barrels per day. Now that there has been $100 billion made available to um, Iraq, um, they are going to, um, go out and, uh, they're now looking at, will produce no, they're going to guarantee under their, um, agreement to produce no more than 400, 4 million barrels per day of crude, um, Iraq, which pumped 4.292 uh, million barrels per day in December, uh, is one of several OPEC uh, plus producers who pledged at the end of November to make voluntary cuts. Um, here's a quote. Afterwards, in order to support market stability, these voluntary cuts will be returned gradually to subject market con uh, conditions, said uh, the UAE, the head of the uh, uh, UAE. Right now, uh, they are between 3.35 uh, million barrels per day and 3.4 million barrels per day. So um, sanctions don't work as intended. And quite honestly, this is not, I, I don't believe that OPEC plus and OPEC have the ability to truly track what people, uh, what countries are producing. And I believe it's going to be very much like um, Venezuela when they were, uh, Brazil, excuse me, when they were invited to join uh, OPEC plus, uh, they said that they're just going to produce everything that they want anyway. So it just depends on how that goes. Anyway, just pretty interesting. Let's take a look here at Furbo Energy Drilling as the results show rapid advancement of geothermal performance. This is pretty cool. Furbo uh, Cape Station to show 70% year-over-year reduction in drilling times and pave the way for rapid geothermal deployment. I love geothermal as a renewable type energy, and I love what this article is talking about. Uh, Tim Latimer is the CEO. Quote, since its inception, Fervo has looked to bring a manufacturing mentality to enhance geothermal development, building a highly 
uh, repeatable drilling process that allows for continuous improvement and show, as a result, lower cost, said Tim Latimer. Um, in six months, we've proven that our technology solutions have led to a dramatic acceleration in forecasting uh, uh, drilling performance. And when you sit back and take a look, um, the, our great EMP operators have the ability, the knowledge, uh, the, uh, the wherewithal to get good drilling done at very, very good costs. And when you marry geothermal uh, power in our great EMP operators, you get a fantastic home run uh, running down the road for geothermal. All about it. And I think this is, uh, says a lot of um, fantastic things uh, for our um, renewable and oil and gas running down the road together. So hats off to Vervo uh, Energy. Let's go to the last story for today. Japan X sees U.S. as enticing destination for energy exploration. Uh, out of Tokyo, Japan Petroleum Exploration, or JAPEX, sees the United States as the most appealing investment destination for oil and gas exploration and production, despite political risks posed this year's election. Quote, unquote, with its... Um, Wealth of natural resources, low production cost, and well-developed infrastructure, we view the United States as the most enticing investment destination for EMP at this pres uh, moment. I'm going to butcher this name, and I'm so sorry. Miracho Yamachata, Senior Managing Executive Officer, told a news conference. Natural gas and LNG are poised to play a pivotal role in facilitating energy transitions in the U.S. largest LNG exporter. Another tidbit, and the reason that this is very interesting, is there was another purchase of uh, Japan's LNG um, uh, facility in actually the uh, larger purchasing of the LNG facilities. And so this looks like they're buy, uh, buying even more going upstream, so to speak, if you would, uh, and really trying to help get the whole process in line to guarantee their energy uh, security. I applaud uh, Japan for doing this, and I just wish that um, uh, our other leaders in the United States had America first, like the rest of the world has their countries first. So uh, with that, hey, like, subscribe, please reach out to us at any time. Uh, I would love to have you on the podcast. Our podcast is going absolutely crazy. I'd love to uh, thank our staff and everyone. Um, I just had Matt uh, Shoemaker. Uh, his, he is an absolute hoot. Uh, he went out and uh, just absolutely is running. A, uh, he's going to stand up to AOC and everybody in the uh, uh, squad. Uh, he is an absolute uh, funny guy. He's in uh, uh, back and endorsed by General Flynn, as well as uh, General uh, Charles uh, Flynn, as well as Governor Huckabee. Any of you guys want to hop on the podcast as well, too, I'd love to visit with all of you and uh, or any one of you with him. And uh, also Sean Dunnigan, absolutely great feedback. He is a home run for uh, anyone to have on your podcast. Um, and then we also have several others uh, that have just reached out. Again, if you missed it, we had 32 podcasts we recorded between Ray Trevino on The Crude Truth uh, Jay Young, as well as uh, David Blackman. So with all that, energynewsbeat.co. Uh, let's see if we can bump up our numbers. We had 26 million people on the site last year. We're going to go for mm, 40 million. So buckle up, staff. We're off and running here for a lot more traffic this year. Thanks. Talk to you all soon. Have a great day.